Let's get to the point. What is Paul then saying in Galatians 6? There is the biblical pre-understanding for all that will be said. So now let's look at what Paul got to say a bit about it here in Galatians 6. 6. Anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with his instructor. Seems pretty plain, doesn't it? Here's God's buy one get one free provision for the building up of the church. Prayer and preaching. To help the church become what it's meant to become, as we saw in Galatians 4.11. To make it what it wants to be, what he wants it to be. There's the provision. Here's how it gets paid for. Anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with his instructor. Now, given there's been false doctrine in the Galatian church, and division in the Galatian church because of that false doctrine, and correction from local leaders not being heeded, and not then being applied very well because they feel threatened, check the recordings of previous weeks if you're not with me on that. Given that that's the background and that's the context, why do you think Paul needs to say this? Do you think it's possible that those who paid the ministerial piper at Galatia, felt it was their role to call the ministerial too. Is that so unusual a human prospect? Happens, doesn't it? Ministers who let it happen function like, like dancing monkeys on a rope, don't they? The rich people hold the rope, and they give him peanuts to dance to their tune. Do you want that sort of ministry? Who wants that sort of ministry? How common is that in Wales? How common is that in Wales? We pay you that. We don't hear this sort of ministry. When I was in, um, <laughs> when I was in Gravesend, the second time in Gravesend, um, we took over an old chapel, which had been an old strict Baptist chapel. Do you remember the porch? And, and in the old days, the, the old people of the town used to tell me, you'd, you'd go in, and there, just inside the porch, Big old porch built inside, dark and grim, painted dark colours to remind you of the darkness of your soul. And as you as you walk through the door, welcoming prospect, there were two boxes on the wall, and they were so that you put something in it, it went away straight away into a chute. And, and on the inside of the church, where they could keep an eye, it was a locked receptacle holding the money. And on one it said for missions, and on the other it said for the ministry. And the old people used to tell me that if the sermon hadn't been what they fancied the week before, it'd all go in the, on the missions box. <laughs> and, and, you know, oh, how unbelievable is that? Well, how believable is that? Isn't that human nature? Isn't it human nature to want to use your human substance to support the sort of ministry you really want to hear? And how dangerous is that spiritually? To be supporting the ministry that your itching ears are wanting to hear. How dangerous is that? rather than the ministry that brings God's living word to me and cuts with the bone of you. Let's be clear about the context here. In Galatians 6, Paul has been dealing with the issues that arose, the chaos that arose, because of false doctrine and the efforts to correct it in the predominantly, I'd say, Celtic church in, I'd say, North Galatia, but that's a matter of text. He's tackled that error. He's tackled it head on by asserting the doctrine of justification by grace through faith alone regardless of whether there will be gifts coming from Galatia in the future. He's tackled the errorists, and he suggested there's such a threat he wishes they'd go the whole way and emasculate themselves. Paul is no grey-suited preacher, mincing words. And having dealt with the error, he's, he's taught the essential gospel truth in Galatians 5, we've got as far as chapter 5 now, in Galatians 5, that it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And we should not, again, become burdened by a yoke of slavery. And, you know, he knows there'll be faces pulled in the congregation, as this is being said in Galatia, being read out. People storming off. Leaving church in a flurry down the aisle. Because they don't want to hear that. But it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And we should therefore not allow ourselves to be burdened again by a yoke of legalistic slavery. And then we get into chapter 6 and he's gone on to teach about how we should deal with the error and sin that life in a fallen but forgiven church is going to throw up. We deal with sin in the church of God. People do get the hump. We'll see why in a minute. 
apparently correction of Galatia hadn't been well executed and it certainly hadn't been well received. And in the context of showing how correction should be done and by whom in chapter 6 verses 1 to 2 and dealing with having too high a view of oneself, conceit, that word conceit, kind of difficult word isn't it? Conceit leading to a competitive confrontation and or jealousy, probably what messed up the local leaders' attempts to put things right at Galatia. In chapter 6, verses 3 to 5, then Paul moves on to say this. Immediately he moves on to say this. When trying to put things right in the church hasn't been well received, and therefore they've felt threatened, these leaders, and they've started doing it wrong, because they feel threatened by the, what's coming back at them. In that context, Paul says, anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with his instructor. Do, do, do you get it? It's obvious now, isn't it? It's obvious what's going on. Well, it's going to speak like that. I'm not supporting the guy. Isn't that obvious? Do you think it's a coincidence? Certainly not. It's a great warning here about the sinful human heart. But I'd rather hear what it wants to hear than hear the word of the living God and will use money to subvert ministry of the word and give itself self-pleasing. Passing off self-pleasing as hearing the word of God. Did you hear that last bit? Passing off hearing what we want to hear as being what God wants to say. How hard is that? It's tough, isn't it? It's really tough.